For more on Boeing, we're joined by Elio Fred Garcia, who is the president of Logos Consulting Group. Also, Carter Copeland, an analyst at Melius Research. Uh, Elio, let's start with you. Uh, it seems like there's a news story or two every day on Boeing. What, what's the battle that they face at this point? The battle they face is that the key to maintaining or restoring trust is to show you care, and their response hasn't consistently showed they care. I've been baffled by their continued assurance that the plane is safe, while also saying, but we're working on a software fix. And I couldn't understand the relationship between those two statements until the Wall Street Journal story yesterday, where I think I figured it out, and that is, when they say the plane is safe, they mean when pilots know how to fly it. Mm -hmm. But it's clear from the Journal story, which apparently has been confirmed, that they didn't tell the airlines clearly enough that the standard safety feature from prior 737s was optional on this one. Some airlines didn't have it. Here's what I don't understand. Joe made this point earlier, and I haven't been able to figure out the answer to it. If this was an optional safety feature that they were going to be charging companies extra for, how come the airlines didn't know like, that it was offered or that they'd even be charged? Or it may have been known in procurement, but it didn't get it, to right. the pilots. And, and one of the things that, that I do is teach engineers crisis at Columbia. And I tell them in the crisis, you got to stop thinking like an engineer. You got to start thinking like the people who use your technology. And I don't think Boeing was thinking like a pilot. They were thinking like the technologist. We know this plane is safe, and pilots know how to fly it. And I think the disconnect was the pilots weren't aware that the safety feature had been turned off. Um, Carter, let, let's talk about the perspective from Wall Street, because I think your views sure. reflect what we've heard from most of the this company, that this is a momentary blip, but that with stock at these prices, you'd still be a buyer, correct? Yeah, I, I, we, we certainly feel that way. Look, I, I think there, there was a breakdown in communication, and we can look at all that. The, the question for the market is, you know, how do we move forward from here and what's reasonable? And so, you know, now we find ourselves at a spot where last week's earnings results and the, the commentary there sort of uh, gives you a, a little bit more visibility in, in terms of bounding financial outcomes. And, you know, we've all suspected, uh, and I know we've talked about those, those financial hits being relatively small in the grand scheme of things. I think the disclosures last week uh, would confirm that. Uh, I think we're also coalescing around, uh, you know, a timeline that, you know, the FAA is looking for the end of you know, May, and then you've got a joint panel that will push you out a couple months beyond that. Oh, and what the market about wants the, to see is that. Some of the pilots complaining about some of those, that joint panel, the early recommendations already saying it's not enough, that they want more than just computer time. Uh, they will also, computer training, they also want flight simulation time. Yeah, I think that's fair. If that's what the customer demands and it pushes the timeline out, then that's fine. But if you, if you have uh, a timeline that you can have some level of confidence in, even if it's a month longer or two months longer, I think, frankly, that's bounded by the, the right. financial impact that Boeing uh, called out last week, and which I think has a little bit of conservatism but built The into question it. that I would ask both of you, though, is, is there a culture problem here? And is there a management problem here? And does that portend a change at the top, meaning... Is the CEO potentially going to get pushed out? We've seen in a whole number of cases, whether it be in the case of banks, Tim Sloan at Wells Fargo, the regulators decided they didn't have the confidence in him to run the company anymore. They switched him out. Um, do, we, do we think that 12 months from now, we're going to be looking at the same company? I'm not convinced that, the, that it, there's an equivalence with Wells Fargo. There was malfeasance there. There doesn't seem to be malfeasance at Boeing. At Boeing, it seems to be a tragic misunderstanding that... Pilots believed they knew how to fly this plane. Boeing believed apparently told the airlines how the plane needs to be flown. And, and the disconnect is the pilots seemed completely unaware. I would advise Boeing to take as much time as possible for the pilots to be fully confident that they know how to do this. If this means delaying the, the ungrounding of the fleet, delay right. the ungrounding. That's what's going to get through the crisis. They now need I to be that's so right. responsible. I think you've also got to remember here as well, you've got you know, multiple layers of management uh, up through the Boeing Commercial Airplanes uh, organization all the way up to corporate. And then you know, the launch of this product and then the certification of this product and the early use of this product span multiple management careers. So if you start going through uh, who should have known what, you've got to go back a couple layers. Uh, Carter, that was out, true, you know, by the way, um, also in the case of Wells Fargo. And I'm not claiming this is all malfeasance, but I would also suggest to you we have now whistleblowers coming forward, now half a dozen dozen whistleblowers coming forward. In the case of this particular plane, there are examples of, of, of problems 
with deliveries of planes to our own military, where the military is on record with Congress as saying that there's a problem in terms of uh, some of the some of the uh, the, the uh, planes that they were delivered. So I, I, I'm suggesting it's we can look at this one finite slice and give them the the benefit of the doubt, and I'd like to do that. I'm just anxious because there seems to be a series of these things You're happening. Anxious again. And well there's a desire to connect them all too, Andrew, which I, I'm not sure if, you know, foreign object debris on one aircraft is indicative of a massive cultural fa uh, failure across a giant organization. That's the only point. And and I would argue that they they've had two strikes against them now. They can't mess up going forward. So they need to be hyper-cautious, hyper-responsible, hyper-concerned right. about the user of their product and the people who get into the plane and fly in it. That has Absolutely. to be their first priority. Hey, Carter, Absolutely. I think my, my bigger question on this is uh, all of these small things that, that Wall Street seems to be able to get its arms in terms of what the financial impact is, uh, maybe it's a little tougher to get the big picture. Is there longer-term problems uh, either from a credibility or customer relationship perspective between Boeing and, and, its, and its customers and what this means and its competition down the road, or from the FAA perspective and the way it used to work where other agencies around the globe would kind of follow what the FAA did. Has, has that trust broken down, and, and what does that mean, bigger picture? Look, uh, Becky, I think there's an intersection of all of this stuff, right? I mean, w w if we're you know, debating a dollar of Boeing's earnings in some future period, you know, in terms of the stock price and what we think about, you know, its value, that's a small number. Mm -hmm. uh, what's really been a big part of the Boeing, you know, uh, meteoric rise in the stock price in recent years has been uh, the sort of lower risk and, and decision making that has, you know, produced higher returns. And those things have been very connected. I think in, investors want to see not only a, a resolution to this, but some follow through that basically says, hey, look, you know, we, we, we get it. And we're going to try to over exaggerate the fixes to this and in a way that, you know, has lasting impacts. And that'll have a bigger impact on the trading multiple. And that'll matter a lot more than, than the EPS. Carter, thank you. Elio, thank you for joining us. Thank you.